Hi, my name is Dale Meredith, and I'd like to welcome you to the Six Steps to Effective Incident Response. Now, I like to list my certifications here. I'm obviously a Microsoft certified uh, trainer as well as a cybersecurity trainer, but I like showing off my unknown certifications like my RSVP and my PDQ and my OK, which means I can respond to a party invitation really quickly with an OK. Now, that's the type of jokes you're going to get here. But more in depth about myself is I've been a, a plural site author for some time now. Uh, I've helped to create the Certified Ethical Hacking course series along with Troy Hunt. Uh, and currently I'm working on the Pentest Plus series. Now, if you've watched any of my courses before, you're probably very familiar with the fact that I am a huge Batman fan. And the reason why I'm a huge Batman fan, well, actually, I like to ask people, why do you think Batman over all the other heroes? And it's because we have something in common. No, we didn't both witness our parents murdered in a dark alley, but we're both normal guys. We just think about things ahead of time. We have contingency plans. We're always one step ahead. Batman's got a contingency plan for in case Superman goes bad. And we need to have contingency plans when it comes to cybersecurity. And we have those plans to help us with incidences. Now, when we talk about an incident, we're talking about the aspect of handling those incidences, and we're referring to basically a set of procedures and policies that we can use to prepare for, detect, and overcome security incidences within your organization. Now, our overall goals is that once an incident happens, these steps should help us to accomplish the following. One would be to have a step-by-step -step response so that we don't miss any steps. We don't overlook something. We also wanna make sure that we can recover as quickly as possible. We're gonna make sure that we take what we learn from an incident and apply it to what we know so that we can use it in the future. And in some cases, we may have to be prepared for legal issues. Okay, well, something just happened. Everybody panic. No, no, we're not going to panic. The first thing you need to do when you uh, discover an incident is you need to make sure that you have an updated resume as well as updated letters of recommendations. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's actually some better things that we can do. And some of those things or tasks are going to be accomplished ahead of time. So before we get into the first couple of steps, I want to talk about our game plan that we have set up before the incident hits. Again, as I mentioned before, we call these playbooks. And we should actually have different playbooks for different types of incidences. One for, I don't know, maybe your website gets defaced. Or one for malware infections. One for unauthorized domain admin access one for ransomware. Each one of these are going to have different types of steps and procedures that we're going to go through. I think you kind of get the gist of things here, right? Now, these playbooks should basically give you those step-by-steps -steps that you or anybody on your team can follow. The reason why we have these playbooks is when everybody's running around panicking and confused, there's actual focus. And these steps will actually help our team stay focused so that we can look at the particular who, what, where, when of this incident. Okay, let's start with the first step. The first step is assessing the situation. The first thing you need to do is take a deep breath. Be calm. Typically, drastic decisions will come back to haunt you. So be calm. And remember, we've trained for this, hopefully, right? We've gone through the steps or our playbooks in a test environment ahead of time. Now, what we're going to do is first determine if the attack itself or this incident is real, or maybe it's just a server that's acting up. Is it a virus? Is it a worm? Is there some sort of script kitty out there in Bogota that's attacking your system? If you're able to determine that this isn't a glitch, then by all means, this is all hands on deck. We'll be looking at things like services that are running on the target, applications, updates. Try to figure out why this particular system. You'll also want to go through and make sure that you look at the logs. Now, in some cases, you may not have logging enabled on particular targets. This would actually be a good time to turn it on to help document everything that's happening from the discovery of the incident to the resolution of the incident. 
you'll need these logs as well to recover from an attack as well as possible documentation for legal reasons. You'll want to make sure that you start documenting everything that is being done on each system as you start to contain the incident. We're also, again, depending on the incident, we should start breaking out our call sheet to start calling and contacting everyone on the team or possibly others within the organization that can help identify the source and destination of that particular compromise. Okay, number two. We're going to go through, and this is our main goal, right, is to minimize the damage. Now, whether the systems are physical or virtual doesn't matter. We're going to treat them all the same. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, hey, Dale, wouldn't it be just great to uh, cut the hard line, <laughs> pull the plug? Well, this could actually be detrimental to your organization. Now, granted, shutting off power will actually eliminate the risk from further data exfiltration or other harmful attacks. But while that might stop the attacker currently, it could put your organization into an even worse position because you could lose valuable business data or even forensic information stored in the system's volatile memory. So as a result, shutting down the power may actually benefit the attacker. You can start First, by minimizing the damage by taking some baby steps. And this could be implementing new firewall rules to block offending traffic. You might even, depending on your relationship with your ISP, contact them to have them help you block the offending traffic. So you'll have to make that decision of whether to block or monitor the intruder's activity. Monitoring could actually help you from a forensic perspective. Now listen, by all means, if the situation is dire and you need to pull the plug or disconnect from the network, do so um, in order to mitigate the possibility of the threat from spreading deeper. Okay, let's talk about step number three. And that's gathering the forensic data from the infected systems. And this could be getting a snapshot of the server at the time the attack was implemented. This could be done either via backups or if it's a virtual machine, we could get a snapshot of that VM. In some cases, we may have to notify law enforcement so that they could possibly do the same if need be. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to continue our documentation, include network typology drawings, any recent system additions, the identity of personnel working on the affected system, and any communication that may pertain to the affected systems that are under attack. Make sure you grab the date and timestamps in your documentation as well. I know some of you are thinking, but Dale, the logs will have those. But you may wanna make a note of the files, physical files on systems that may have changed during that date range. Okay, number four, and that is notifying the authorities. We, this is kind of a delicate one for us, but bringing the attention of the incident to those listed in your playbook is the first step in contacting the authorities. And that could be obviously people within your organization that have been identified as stakeholders for this type of incident. Oh, and don't forget internal personnel as well, especially if notifying them will help to contain the incident itself. Then, depending on the incident, start by notifying local law enforcement and possibly even Homeland Security, depending on the information that was breached. And don't forget any potential victims that are affected by the attack. I know this is a scary one, right? And some uninformed C-level personnel might discourage this. But trust me, this is only good customer service, but also cyber etiquette. The failure to notify potential victims could lead to unwanted legal action. Okay, number five, what you shouldn't do. Yeah. Things that we shouldn't do during an incident is we shouldn't use the infected system to communicate about the incident. I mean, as an example, if an email server has been compromised, don't use that email server to send out emails about the breach. The attackers may be hoping that's what you'll do and essentially be making a bad situation worse. 
Also, don't attempt to hack into the attacker's system. In most cases, this is illegal and could result in you winning an expense-free trip to a local or federal courthouse. Here's an extra one for you. Don't treat any incident lightly. Every security incident is a learning experience, no matter what caused it or what the outcome is. Update your playbooks. What went right? What went wrong? Use those lessons to improve your response next time. Okay, number six, improve your skills. Listen, sometimes we as IT folks think that we're invincible, and we're not. This is the only industry that changes hourly, maybe daily at the most. Marketing doesn't change. Sales doesn't change. But our industry changes all the time. So, one, we need to be flexible. We also need to make sure that we know everyone's skill level. And it's okay to have weaknesses in particular uh, skills. Matter of fact, you know what? We should actually connect IT to HR when it comes to this. We should create actually a culture of continual learning. And how we can do that is start asking each other as you pass each other in the hallway or see each other, what have you learned today? What did you learn new this week or even this year? That would actually be a great question to have on your yearly reviews because we're always trying to improve. Now, another way that you can kind of gauge your skill level is to take advantage of Pluralsight's Skill IQ, which we actually have a particular skill assessment for incident response and handling. And it'll tell you where you need to start improving and which courses can help you out. Okay, so those are my six steps for incident response. I hope you learned something. And until next time, be safe.